Good. Hey, we're doing good. Good to see you guys again. Yeah, thank you. So, we're sorry for everyone that's tuning in right now about the other day and the unfortunate technical issue with the power cut. Can't predict the weather. Um, so, yeah. so, so what happened? Was it just a power outage or what happened? Yeah, just our whole street went completely out. We were sat in, in well, our office is black anyway. So it was just completely pitch black. We were like, oh my God. <laughs> That's Vera's fault. She has she has uh, your, the ability to affect us. You're the one who breaks things. <laughs> <laughs> it only happens yeah. by... Oh, uh, we we used to have a podcast a long time ago, so we know all about how hard it is to do these things. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys having us back, and yeah. it'd be good to talk to you. Yeah, definitely. So I'm trying to think where we left off the other day. Um, what was my last question to you? Was it? Are you Have you ever been out of America? Have you traveled anywhere else? Like for the UK or yeah yeah I, I've been in the UK yeah uh, a couple of times and I love it I absolutely love it my first time was a um, trip from college uh, my English class we we went there to England Ireland and Wales and I was telling Kendall I actually started talking about it because I just remembered that I actually had a couple of paranormal experiences. The possibly paranormal experiences that uh, I had happened to me during that trip. And I told Ken it was interesting yeah. because I wasn't into ghost hunting or anything. It was just, yeah. I was just visiting. I was on vacation <laughs> on a holiday. And you got, and, and then <laughs> I experienced those things. It was really, really weird. Well, you guys have <laughs> way more of a history in architecture and structure and we do than we here. do so i mean i'm sure you could just kind of go anywhere and it's just yeah. you know you got you got just awesome architecture around you that's from what what where does it date back to 1500s uh, we've oh, got gosh. one that goes far back to 1100 yeah wow. it's, it's way farther so i yeah. told you i started a mansion from the 1500s yeah and that was right. like established it was well established so, um, yeah, that, that was a beautiful house. I was just visiting and I did kind of really weird experience there. And then come to find out the next morning, they told me, the guy didn't believe in ghosts, the owner, but the wife sort of did. And she, and, um, and they say that um, she would have totally been stoked if she heard my story. She wasn't there at the time. <laughs> but the guy was like, no, there's no ghosts here. But my wife does tell me that apparently she did research on the property and they had a servant here that it was she was misbehaving and she was thrown into the well just right in front, where the, in front of the house where the parking lot is now. And, uh, and she was just in by rats. Oh. She died there. Oh, like, my gosh. Yeah, she man, died from man. starvation and just... People were just ruthless back in the day. I mean, um, <laughs> throw, throwing somebody into a well just because they just want to. But the funny just... thing is that all night long, I felt like something was staring on my face, like right here. And I felt like a, like a woman to me. And I had dreams on and off. I, I kept waking up and, and going back to sleep. And then whole night, I had dreams as I was being bitten Ugh. with little bites on my hands. And I was just like, I can't believe you just said that because I literally had a dream all night that I was having a little bites and it was horrible. But I don't know. Uh, even it went all the way to the next morning. I was uh, taking a shower and I, oh, you know, you know how cats when they get scared they go yeah, like they like a spine gets all like breezy. Like that's how I was <laughs> feeling. Like something was making me go like this, like ah, like chills and my spine the whole What's time. What's your spidey sense? Nonstop. <clears throat> and uh, I finally, it was funny because I was putting my makeup, getting ready to go to breakfast, and I finally 
I turned around and I was like, stop. I'm just trying to put my make my makeup. I was like, stop. <laughs> Whatever you are, there's a noise that has been annoying me all night. By that time, I was so tired already. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. I don't know if it was a ghost or not or what it was. Who knows? But that was interesting. There's a lot of residual haunting in England, more than anything else, I would say. I think that's to do with how old the baboons are. Um, have you have you both got any plans to come to the UK in in the near future? Um, we we would love to. I I uh I got a chance to visit, and I I visited uh, the Hellfire Caves, and that's one location that I. I, I really had a good time at, I mean, it, just seeing the history and, um, you know, just the, the, just the uniqueness of going in a chalk cave and, and, uh, and, and then, um, yeah, it, it, we had a, we had a good time over there. There was a lot of, uh, oh, we did the Jack the Ripper tour. That's what I was going to say. That was kind of mm -hmm. neat. I don't know if you guys yeah. have done that at all. I'm sure it's like, uh, the thing to do when you go, you know, and, and, um, yeah kind of check out the paranormal of of uh of england but i did not do that um i was a little nervous i don't like hearing stories <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean we, we would love what's that Sorry, i was gonna say we did something similar we haven't done on the jack rip at all but we have been like we went to the caves and we went to the the jack rip and we chasing us through the house Oh. <laughs> oh, you love those. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> You're brave. You're brave. I could not handle that. Oh, gosh, no. I think we'll, we'll, chase, we'll chase my wallet at one point. Yeah. That's quite a highlight of it all. Yeah, that's the closest we've been to. Something like that. But no, yeah, I, I, still do got... I do recommend if you ever come to the UK to check out the ancient Ram Inch. That's a, a must go. Definitely. What is it called? The Ancient Ramen. Okay. Ancient Ramen. It sounds familiar. We are gonna check. I'll research that. Yeah, that's. Yeah. What? Tell tell us about it. What is what is the? Uh... It's basically, basically, I think it's set back in about twelve hundreds. Uh, it's a, it's a, I'm not sure what, what it's somebody's home for forty odd years, but apparently the building was built on some kind of like sacrificial site. And apparently, as mm. stories go, the uh, we sacrificed children on that land. Oh, and gosh. in the build in the building, there's, there's an open grave where they still got the child's bones in the floor still, and still to this oh, day no. finding finding bones. And I investigated it probably four or five times, and the amount of child EVPs we've got from there is clear as day. It's a really it's it's a place that for me it's one it, I first started that when I first started investigating, and it changed me from a skeptic. A believer, and mm. wow, it's supposed to be a demonic force called an incubus. Have you ever heard of those? Yeah, yeah, especially one of those with his eyes there as well. So it's quite oh, a wow. place to Sounds heavy, oh, sounds man. heavy. Yeah, that is heavy. Wow, I mean, yeah, you guys, you guys have locations there that have dungeons and tortures and all kinds of stuff. Uh, uh, you know, medieval devices. I I just remember being in in shock at seeing some of the uh, some of the torture devices that that people would go through, and I just can't imagine, you know, what it would be like just staring that thing down right before they're about to put you in that. You know, you got to think with that kind of energy being expelled, that you know, you, there's some kind of imprint of something you know it's yeah. just like that's just that's just sheer terror you know yeah i mean back in the day even just stealing a loaf of bread you'd have been hung for it or you'd have your hands chopped off and that sort of thing so, I mean, it, it was horrendous wasn't it but the execution is just so barbaric here well i'm glad we uh, we've come a long way from that yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> oh boy so, um um you guys are our heroes and you're amazing. And <laughs> thank you. We can't have you on here and not talk about the house in between. Aww. 
Yeah. Which, which we still haven't seen yet, by the way. We haven't seen it yet. But we are still trying to get it. Yeah. We're all, we are struggling at the minute. Yeah. So people overseas are having a hard time getting to it, right? Getting but you to it. Know a way. But yeah, it's it, you can go to Google Play. Uh, and check out the house in between or Vimeo on demand, um, the house in between. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the best way for overseas, uh, to, to check out the film. Um, yeah, it's been an adventure the last two years. Um, just been, uh, head deep in, in making this, this film, this documentary. Um, it's, uh, it's a, it's a documentary about a woman who owns a, um, a house that was built in the 90s so it's a new house uh it's a newer house that has unique paranormal activity happening in it and uh the the, the documentary deep dives into the journey of alice and the investigators um that have been investigating the house for about a decade wow uh, who's idea was it for the actual Film. Was it yours or was it Steve's or you or? Yeah, so Steve Gonzalez um, went to the house, met Alice Jackson and Brad Cooney and John Bullard, um, and uh, Steve Steve was there just um, just doing an investigation, a personal investigation, and uh, and he had a uh, he had a an experience there that was that was odd. It was an interactive experience with the house on command. And, uh, it didn't, it didn't settle right with him. Cause I know Steve, you know, he's, he's, uh, he, he doesn't have very many experiences. And, and, and I know that, um, that he was, he was very interested in the house after that. And, uh, he got thinking and then, um, he contacted Vera and I, we had just started robot ninja media, our uh, production company. And he said, Hey, uh, you know, I'm looking at doing a documentary on this house in Mississippi and uh and you know we got involved and and uh, met alice and john and brad and uh saw some of the evidence that they had captured over the decade and uh yeah we jumped right in i mean it's it it was uh it was a no-brainer for us to kind of hit the ground running and start telling alice's story it was very unique because it was a location where they've been constantly filming 24 7 uh with the use of dvr system and and going over the footage i mean it was they were constantly investigating uh odd odd phenomenon there and and they actually caught good evidence so it was no brainer you know to 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 just go in and tell the story yeah and alice's uh main experience the experience that moved alice out of her house because alice does you know the documentary is based around Alice moving out of her house. Um, that she, it was her dream home. I mean, she built this house and she had to move out of it because of this paranormal experience. Now, but she did live with uh, odd occurrences for for from 1990 to 2011. Yeah, she it wasn't like it. overnight. She it started ramping up until yeah. this major uh, light experience, something that she experienced with. Um, with uh, just a unique light experience, an anomaly that- um, In her bedroom. <laughs> the inner bedroom, uh, she was alone. Uh, it defied the, the laws of physics uh, and it just freaked her out. And she, she moved out after that. And basically the paranormal investigators moved in um, and got their, got their uh, full reign of the house to investigate what happened to Alice. Well, I mean, obviously, the house in between, obviously, you make it into a film, but is it just a one up where you're looking to do other ones and other locations and other stories and that sort of thing, or is it just a one up? Um, right, right now, yeah, the the film just stands on its own right now, and um, if there's a follow up or a part two, uh, that's yet to be decided on. Um, there is still stuff happening at the home; it's still being documented. We're actually the house is kind of off limits to people coming in um, right now because uh, it is still being filmed. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, it's it's there, and uh, and yeah. Um, the story still continues. I mean, it's just, it's fascinating how many people have been affected by this house. Uh, uh, neighbors, 
uh, contractors, uh, workers that built the house. So, you know, it, it has this story that just unravels quite far. Um, and, and yeah, it, it's just a unique story and, and check it, check out the documentary. It's a, it's, it's a fun watch. Um, it's different than, than what maybe you're used to watching some of these paranormal TV shows. And, um, and it really gives you a sense of, uh, of, of being a paranormal investigator along for the ride, um, kind of a couch investigator. We give you a lot of information that you can kind of deep dive into your, uh, you know, we say it's thought provoking and it, it really holds true to that. Yeah. Also, um, it's important to mention that for the viewers, this is not a horror movie. It's no, you're not going there to get jump scares and and just be like, you know, under the blanket. Maybe you do, but pro most likely not. You know, There's a couple it's, it's spots. It's a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a storytelling of a real case of a lady who has been a victim of a paranormal uh, phenomenon then has been happening to her on her house for over 10 years. So it was more about the storytelling of her as a you know victim of this phenomenon that we didn't know if it was paranormal or not and that's why we went in there yeah. i mean steve was steve was very passionate about uh trying to give her answers because what if this lady is so scared she's not living in her own home but then all of this could be explainable and we're we're you know steve and i early on before we started the production we had agreed that we wanted to tell the real story from start to finish of of you know going in and trying to get somebody answers and so you know we we asked for scientists we asked for geologists we mm -hmm. you know we tried to get as many professional people to get eyes on some of these strange occurrences that was happening at alice's house to give alice a good feeling of oh I can move back in so we you know early on we decided to follow the story from start to finish and in in tell it in a linear fashion uh, you know any kind of lead like a detective we wanted to um, tell the story as we follow the leads and have you know that you guys follow along with us on our journey and if you know if we got doors slammed in our face which we did we wanted to show that and you know we we wanted to show just exactly what it's like to walk into a house um, with a homeowner that is experiencing haunted um, occurrences or pur pur purportedly haunted experiences. And without giving too much away, if you don't mind, what kind of um, paranormal experiences have occurred and as to why these are occurring? Yeah, so um, there's a lot of stuff happening in the home. Um, it's been told that it's multiple layers of things happening. So like you have everything from like EVPs, you have, uh, um, you have- Things moving. You have things moving, things that there's, you know, there's uh, um, experiences of things disappearing. Um, and then appearing again. Reappearing, so there's light anomalies. There's uh, music, music sounds that you don't even know what the source yeah. is. It's just there and yeah. odd music. One of my favorite uh, parts of the documentary is actually footage that Brad Cooney um, captured with a, uh, a police officer. He was an off-duty police officer. They were in the house and they were just hanging out downstairs. And upstairs, you can see it on his cell phone footage. Uh, you hear um, thumping and uh it almost sounds like somebody's like running around or furniture's being thrown and it, it you know it was documented really well uh, he captured it perfectly and you can hear it clearly in the in the in the film um and you know they go up i, I won't ruin the the scene but um but it was just uh it's fascinating what the house um can do and they weren't even investigating. He was just the he, they were visiting. I think they were having house, like dinner eating. or something. They were yeah, eating, they were eating just fast food, chatting, and, yeah. and then oh, everything just. It always catches you off guard, you know. Yeah. Which I think was very interesting because um, 
people usually think that ghosts come in at night, you know, and this house is super active during the day. That is, yeah, yeah. that's true. We, we kind of never talk about that. No, we didn't really it's talk like, too much you know, about that because it was happening as we were filming, right. and then we were like, wait a minute. Like, why, <laughs> why does paranormal activity always happen during the day? That's or sorry, no, at night. At Why does night. the paranormal activity only happen at night? Sorry. I think um, it's just when people are more relaxed yeah. and maybe in bed and more aware of their surroundings. During the day, we're so busy going, 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 and it's daylight, and we're not really paying attention. We're not even scared. When yeah. the night comes, and now you're like really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so then you you notice weird things. But um, yeah, that house is really active during the day. Mm hmm. I mean, to, to be honest, if a location is haunted, it's not going to matter if it's daytime or nighttime. It's going to be haunted all day through. I think it just yeah. the senses at nighttime, doesn't it? It's just a scare factor comes in and it's pitch dark and you can't see in front of you and that sort of thing. That's why a lot of people do it more than anything. Yeah. And like you guys just said, they captured that image of evidence while they were eating dinner, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, you go into a location, all guns blazing, you've got your K2s out and you blood glass. But me and Brenna took a different approach now in an investigation where we'll go and we'll just see how ourselves, like... Talk amongst ourselves. Yeah. And just basically... Have cameras rolling. Even though we're there doing an investigation, it's basically just ignore our, our surroundings. Just talk between ourselves and let things happen that way. Rather than going, is there anybody there? Come and talk to me. I don't know. <laughs> I... I... Approach. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. I really, We've been really talking like about it. that. Like what, you know... Um, it's it's interesting because you go after these things and it's almost like they hide. Like. <laughs> it's like it's like peekaboo, I'm here, you know. Um, but I, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. It's just it's interesting. Um, and and for us, we're you know, uh, we've been taken off guard quite a bit. It's like when you put the camera down, or you're eating lunch, or you're like packing up. It's it's always it's always interesting when it's like ah. This is a good time to like mess with them or something, you know. It's it's just I, I don't know. I've I've been startled a few times. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> well, you you, you tell me. Oh no, no, Dad, you tell me a lot when you were filming um, your, your TV shows, your ghost shows that yeah. you do. That sometimes it's time for a break. You put cameras down, and everybody's just you know kind of getting ready for the next round, and then stuff stuff will happen. Yeah. Yeah, but nobody was filming. Nobody, it's, nobody was filming. I mean, it's it's it never fails. You have a <laughs> camera malfunction right before you know something, an event, or you put the camera you put the camera down, or you know you're you were just in that room and then you leave the room and then something happens. It's it's uh, it's quite interesting and it it's just it's almost intelligent. I don't I don't know. Like, who knows? I, I don't think we're far enough to be able to say what these things are, what yeah. what is going on, because you know technology is not there yet. I I personally want to see technology catch up and 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 start to really deep dive into looking at some of these paranormal events because there is stuff happening. You know, people are having experiences. I mean, I just saw a stat the other day uh, that like what was it forty. 45 percent of um, people um, believe in ghosts and have and I think it was 32 percent of people have had experiences so that's like a pretty big percentage um, I I think you know I think the farther we get along with technology the more improvements in technology you know we're going to be able to start seeing some of this energy that's that's doing these things I mean, what's your guys' th thoughts on like being respectful at a location? As in, like, obviously not demanding the spirits to come out and do something and that sort of thing. Can we find being respectful, no matter what the spirit's done in the past life, being respectful will get you more response than it will be if you're demanding that spirit to do that, this, do this, do that, and that sort of thing. Right. Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a fine line to, um, to that for sure any you know um when i'm filming the paranormal i'm along for the ride as a cameraman so you know the investigators take the uh you know they take the lead on all that um so you know i've been along for the ride on uh very aggressive provoking sessions and i've been along for the ride on very respectful uh um sessions and you know i found that um 
we get you get more with honey i i think uh if i were to if i were to say a ratio of provoking to to you know just being nice and talking to really? somebody we never talked I, about I know this. i would oh. say cuz the provoking it just amps up a negative energy and i you know it i don't i don't so? know it just you know it i don't know like they i i think because also the investigators that i follow um they're more respectful so i think going in more often than others they're more respectful so that's why we're getting more but i i feel that being respectful in a place where someone died or someone died tragically oh, oh or there's gosh, a child's yes, death you like you have them. to you really have to be very respectful like they were like this incident just happened even it might have happened hundreds of years ago you still have to treat it that way i believe personally well, yeah why would anybody want well to i mean some people go in and they're swearing at you know <gasps> you know that's like it's you know people i mean to be honest, they're, they're, people don't have filters sometimes i think no. I mean, to be honest, it's like me coming to your home now and like demand you to do this and do that. But I think these spirits were once living at one point, and in their, probably in their eyes, it's still their home or their castle or their building. So it's like us walking to their home and saying, "Right, you do this, you do that." They're not going to want to do it. Our so. child, for instance, is a bit scared, and we've yeah. got big group of going in, and they're going to shy away, aren't they? Basically, they're demanding to do something in their own home, so to speak. Mm. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, it it is hard to tell what a ghost really is. Um, and, and, you know, through time, we've, you know, we're pretty sure we believe that they are, they are deceased um, people. And so if that is true, then, yeah, I mean you just have to have that respect factor of, of the dead. You can't go into a cemetery and be, you know, stepping on graves and walking over gravestones and, you know, this and that. And, and we have, you know, we've been talking about this, like who says that ghosts even exist in a cemetery? You know, it's, it's, you know, it's up for debate for sure. I, I mean, if, if I passed away, I'm not going to go to a cemetery to hang out. You know, I, I find myself, you know, probably in my house or somewhere that was Hopefully in heaven. What well, would you want to right. be? <laughs> I mean, in a yes, house. <laughs> of course. Yes. But you know, if, if for some reason I'm going to go play some jokes on you or something, no. <laughs> <laughs> cause I would, I'd be the, <laughs> no, no, no. but I mean, and... go on. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't know if a cemetery is a, a fun place to hang out if if you're deceased, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just, you know, it's just. It should a, be just a place of rest and respect. Yeah, respect, respect, yeah. And then for people to go visit their loved go ones. Your heart belongs to the spirit where it's not in a big field where it's cold. Oh. And the question of. Stephen Woodward, and he's saying to ask you <laughs> why you were skipping and jumping near the end of the documentary. Hey, Stephen. <laughs> good question. That's a very good um, question. Yeah, so, um, you know, you don't, you can't plan for these things. You can't, you never know when something paranormal, paranormal is going to happen. Uh, and when it does, you know, especially when you're not like filming or you're not like in investigation mode, you get startled. Um, <laughs> but for me, I had heard these stories for months and months and months about things that happen in the house, right? And things move in the house and, and the house interacts and this and that. And, you know, it's exciting when something happens in a haunted location that everybody has talked about or that's a claim and you see it right in front of your eyes happening. It's one thing to like somebody telling you, oh, I had this personal experience. But when you have a personal experience that somebody else or, you know, many people have had, it's just, it becomes real. It becomes real. 
it becomes exciting. Because you know, I'm always says, sometimes you hear people's experiences and you're like, "Ooh, that's cool. Oh, wow, interesting." But then that happens to you too. Then now you're like, "Whoa, now it's real." You know, yeah. it becomes a real experience, and, and now you're sharing that with somebody else. So. He was happy. He was so happy. That's why I think he was skipping because he got to experience that. I yeah. think he got scared. I got scared a little bit because he was alone. I in was the house. so excited. I mean, I was so <laughs> excited because I mean, I'm looking for proof too. Like I want to, I, you know, it, and it was exciting too because the house was like nobody was there. Steve and Brad had gone outside and it was just me inside. So it was daytime. And it was daytime and nobody like nobody was investigating. In fact, they were getting ready to leave because we had we, 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 you were wrapping. Yeah, I was you wrapping up. I had to send out the camera. Um I was actually rushing things. to get the camera yeah. sent out. I we rented it. Totally this camera. unexpected. And in fact, because of that reason that part almost didn't make mm -hmm. it in the film. He was very self conscious. I didn't want to He's put like, I don't want to be on camera. At all. That's just yeah. no and I was like this is wonderful. Like this is so good. Yeah. This is a perfect she... example. I pushed it really hard. <laughs> it was like this is a perfect example of how sometimes paranormal things happen when you the least expect them. You're not out there asking. It just happens, and then it's it's a claim that all of them talked about experiencing. So I I, I liked it at, at your cost. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was I, good. I will say though, I'm like, when I see something like that, I get excited. I've been doing this for very, like so many years, like 15 years. And then I've been into Pause, the paranormal for a yeah. long, long time. Um, and you know, when, when things happen like that at the end of the, at the end of the film, it's just exciting because it's like fishing like you, you know you're looking for that big you know that big catch and and you know um all you can hope is that you got it on camera because you know personal experience and seeing it and this and that you know i've had those and it's like okay well you know it's only a personal experience i don't have it documented but like the excitement of getting something documented um, you know, I stepped into your guys' shoes a little bit there when when that happened to me, because um, you know I knew I knew uh, there was a very good chance that we had it on on uh, video because the house was being monitored so well. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? I mean, to, to validate something that some people have been saying for probably months or years, experience it yourself. It, it gives that wow factor. It really does. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, uh, that's that's what that's what gets me um, super interested in in this this topic and you know the paranormal. Um, I do many other shows. I film a lot of different stuff, and um, I think this is this is my favorite because of because of the excitement and the adrenaline you get from it. It's a it's an adventure. It really is, and exploring. Uh, some of these places, you know, I, I, I'm big the on history. like, yeah, the history, the history is just awesome, you know, so you get to, you get to experience all that in one, one location and it's just, it's addictive, you know. I have, a, I have a question for you guys. So you said you're taking a different approach to ghost hunting, which is sitting down and just kind of chatting or just minding your own business. Uh, have you noticed a difference? from the response and the location oh, yeah, by doing course. that yeah. versus doing the regular investigation, asking questions, etc. I mean, obviously you get responses from just going there asking straight questions anyway. But if we find if you're just talking amongst yourselves, so basically like just, just sit down there in the location, talk amongst yourselves, have a laugh and a joke, like you would do in, in your own home. You find you'll hear that, you hear that door knocking or you'll hear that bang, say, look, I'm here. Hello, what are you doing? I mean, you find getting more responses in that way, basically like being more relaxed, like being in your own home. Then you do some of the EVP recording your hand, asking questions after question after question. And you do get a lot yeah. more responses, don't you? We did go to um, a, like an old house where we live, and we were just talking amongst ourselves with an EVP recorder going. And what we think, we captured a little girl saying hello, and none of us was asking out at the time, really. We were just talking about ourselves. I mean, it, was, it was as though, like, obviously, like, she, she could see us there, but she wasn't asking her question to question. She was like, hello, I'm here. 
that sort of thing. Yeah, and you do find you get more of, of like knocks and bangs or that door of that door all slammed without asking questions questions as well. You do find it more responsive at times. Plus if you're yelling really loud at at something, you're gonna miss those sounds because you're yelling. <laughs> <laughs> it's like talking all over somebody, you know. You're talking nonstop. Yeah, <laughs> or talking nonstop. Yeah, that's. Yeah, you gotta you gotta pause a little bit for you know for the reaction. So. Um, we find as well if you've reported like child spirit in the location as well, we will always take small toys and leave behind as well. Yeah. It's, it's like we've got the, the, the REM pod there and that sort of thing. So you you imagine you put that in, in the location, the child's touching it, it's going off. You think. At the end of the night, you were taking that bear away. That child was trying to play with that bear. You start trying, it and it's trying to play with it, and it's just like taking your child's toy away. Uh, so we always leave, always take a little small toy, which leaves behind as well. Oh, Aww. like a parting gift. Yeah. yeah. That's that's that really time. that's a good idea. I like that. That's well, really that's, that's really nice. That's nice of you. Guys. Yeah. You get all these cat walls and. You're asking the child spirit to try and touch them and, and react with them. And obviously, in that child's eyes, that, that's a toy for, for him or her to play with. So obviously, you're trying to get them to play with it. And obviously, at the end of the night, you're taking it away. It's like someone's coming in your, your own home, taking your kids' toys away. So we always just buy a small little teddy bear or even a toy car and just leave them behind in the location. Yeah. Mm. That's a that's a really good idea. I, I, I mean, if... If there is a child even there, um, that would be, you know, that would be a nice, a nice thing nice to gesture. do. Nice gesture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I get, I get really sad when I, I think about, you know, children yeah, ghosts. I, I don't it's think, a hard topic I don't us. think I want to believe that children are actually I have ghosts. a hard time. Yeah. Because, um, uh, why would a child be trapped? Yeah. Why would their soul essence or conscience or whatever be trapped? Uh, I just don't. I don't like why it. Why can't they yeah. just go on, move yeah. on, onto the next and be at peace? I don't know. It's uh, it's 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 a hard topic for us to. <laughs> Every time, yeah. anything that involves yeah. children, we get Whenever so we, yeah. we get really sad. It's yeah. yeah. Mm. Especially with being a mom as well, like kind of brings it home a little bit. But I find it really yeah. hard when you. Yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. I mean, early on when I was when I was um, filming ghost hunting and and paranormal investigation, uh, I didn't have kids, and you know, I definitely I definitely connect with with that because yeah, I, d I didn't think of it the way I do now after having kids. Um, yeah. It definitely brings it right home. Definitely, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. We were at a place the other week, and uh, there was sort of um, three child spirits in this forest. And towards the end, we were getting quite good validation that there was someone there of a, of a little girl spirit. And we asked her, did we, did she want us to leave? And she flashed on the REM pod, and that just broke my heart because, like, it was clearly obvious. Yeah, obviously, there's a story behind it. Obviously, there's three children's spirits in this certain woods, uh, obviously because they're not, not for the right reason. Um, but obviously if I look at it, they are actually trapped here, which is not, you know, I mean, I'd love to go with the media and try and pass them over if that's possible. Because obviously, I mean, mm -hmm. they lost their lives for a tragic way, but obviously going into too much detail, not detail on, on, on the line, but to sort of basically validate that they were still, or at least one of them was still there, for the young child, it's, we'd look, I'd say we'd love to go back and try and yeah. help them pass over. But look, they are actually trapped in the location, which is, mm. is I'd say it's yeah. hard with kids, and you've only got your own. It's mm. yeah. I'm trying to know, I know, we'll leave that one there. And <laughs> I'm getting emotional. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, how about this? Let's, let's, what if, what if, what if these aren't dead people? What if they are multi dimensional and they are, you know, it's a, it's a child that is. You know, alive dipping, in a dip, different dimension. Alive in a different dimension, dipping into our, you know, reality. our our reality. Um, what if, uh, what if it's a mirror image of something that had happened a while ago? What if it's an imprint of energy? Like, there's so many what ifs 
that um, I think we should we should think about that as well instead of just going down the rabbit hole. I of, like the hypothesis much better. I can handle that one better. The most I, I do too. One. I get more excited about that. <laughs> It breaks my heart to think there's a ghost child out there. It like, does. That's somebody's yeah. baby. I can't. Yeah. I, I can't come yeah. to terms with that. Yeah. It's it's a hard one to kind of mm. bite onto, you. but sorry. <laughs> and it's okay. And so obviously you're a couple in the paranormal, and we're a couple in the paranormal. What do you think the pros and the cons are of being, um, like as a couple in the paranormal? Like work, working together. Ah, that's a. Um, I guess. Do you know we haven't put so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't put so much thought into that yeah. until lately because yeah. people have been calling us couple, couple, yeah. couple. Yeah. There, I actually heard somebody say we are the Chip and Joanne of the paranormal. <laughs> Chip and Joanne is some. It's a famous couple that does reno home renovations and. <laughs> so we're like, we're like, okay. We never like, really thought. Uh, we never thought about um, it that way, but uh. But for us, our our relationship's a little different because, um, you know, the filmmaker aspect of things. We're, um, you know, we've we've done investigations together, uh, in Texas. Um, we did a few, and well, we met. And we That's met, we I met. followed her. You know, I've always been the camera guy, uh, documenting this stuff. So. Yeah. Um, for I was us. in that in that show, uh, Ghost Hunters Academy, and uh, he was following me with a camera. That's how we met on Waverly Hills. Uh, wow. and so, or, yeah, I, I was I was investigating Waverly Hills with uh, Stephen Tango and uh, the whole rest, and and you were camera at the time. Yeah. And uh, so for us, it's been such a common thing to talk about. Yeah. It's been part of our life. <laughs> yeah, he grew I, up with a family open-minded about paranormal because they, you know, they all had um, experiences. And I grew up in a family when it was super normal to talk about ghosts because both of my parents grew up in haunted houses, and they had these crazy experiences happening to them. So I, it was normal. So we never even thought about how abnormal we actually are. <laughs> For the rest of the world, we are not a normal couple. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, we, sure we catch ourselves that. sometimes talking yeah. about this stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, we ca like our neighbors or, yeah. or, or fee people, the family like, members. Or, some family yeah. members are not open to this, and we're just like, yeah, I'm like this, this, and that. And like it's a normal thing. And they're just we gotta do a like, mental mm -hmm. check. It's like, man, we could. I mean, yeah. back in the day, we'd be already in uh, Trans Allegheny. They would have admitted us. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You could you could just send people away for talking how we talk. <laughs> but yeah. um, well, can I just ask, how far did you get, Vera, in the academy with a bit of inside help? Um, oh, they they think I helped you. Out. He asked the inside help. No, how that from, was from the show. Yeah. Oh, how far did, oh, oh gosh, we didn't talk uh, in the terms of like liking each other until after I was gone because yeah. he actually had to sign a contract where he wasn't mm -hmm. even allowed to talk to to the on-screen talent. Yeah. Um, but I did, to answer your question, I did uh, five episodes out of six. Yeah. And the sixth one hurt because it was the Stanley uh, and I really wanted to go to the, to the Stanley Hotel. And I didn't even, at that point, I was just like, you know, I wasn't even in for the winning. It was more like the experience the adventure, and the adventure. Yeah. Uh, and to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Kendall wasn't even, no, Kendall wouldn't I, talk to me. I couldn't, I, you know, for me, I was just a camera guy. Um, <laughs> so like, it's not like I'm like, oh, right, push Vera through. She's going to be the number one. You know, it's <laughs> like. I didn't have I didn't have that kind of pull, nor would I would I ever flex that kind of muscle. Cause. It's interesting because I never thought that I was gonna make it that far. Uh, all of these people that I was competing against, they were actually had experiences ghost hunting. I had never ghost hunt. Other, I was just in love with the topic, and I had experiences myself. I had a, a experience I had while working at a nursing home that made me dip into looking for answers. You know, re regarding my 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 dad who passed away. So that's what got me going, like really, really getting into this whole world. Um, but I had no experience, so I was like, oh, I'm going to be out here in like one or two episodes because all these people obviously like, they, they at least have been to other locations. I didn't even know what ghost hunting was yeah. or like, 
like the EMF detectors and but I was truly passionate like I really really love this topic and I really love this detective approach and looking for answers and I remember loved it. Loved I it. remember I when she first came on set she didn't really know how to walk around in the dark very well and she ran oh into gosh a, I fell she, she fell and ran and I, I fell feel, in I, the I remember tunnel feeling so bad for her. Heels. And I'm just like, my face flat on the on the ground with like dirt and like I'm like, oh, how many dead people went through this tunnel again? Like, I was like, oh god, it was it was terrible. And all I can think about is like looking back to see if anybody was filming. And thank goodness nobody was filming at the time. That one hurt. I actually yeah. had a. <laughs> had a I, rem I remember that one, and then I remember. That's so embarrassing too. It was like, oh god. Yeah. I, I, yes. <laughs> It was crazy. These guys were shot out of a cannon. I mean, it was yeah. like it was like Talk put them on, like put them right in a location and send them off, you know. And and it was like Waverly I Hills. Like a dancing monkey. Like, <laughs> oh, come on, go get there, get in there. Like, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, but it was super exciting. I don't think I've been on one investigation where I haven't fallen yet. I did it live once. Good, good, good for you. It's not fun. I've known a lot of people that have fallen. That? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I'm, I'm I you know, I still find myself tripping over the things. The worst is like You're those really low good. those low coffee tables like they always get me. Oh, they always just, get you they all in and, and, and you know you're not seeing them. And when you have the camera, as you know, some of you guys know that like the camera LCD like blinds you, so like your eyes yeah. are your iris is adjusted to uh, your the eyes light. to that light, and so when you look away, you can't really see much. And you, <laughs> when you're walking around, you only see like you know. You, I think it's like eight feet in front of you, so you're kind of waiting for things and. It's it's interesting. It's definitely a skill set. Um, walking around in the dark, especially as a cameraman, there's there's not a lot of you know. I've I've been around guys that have been on some of these shows that they just they can't even handle it. You know, they just yeah. <laughs> they're walking backwards they're falling. You know, they're loud. They're like, you know, banging into stuff. Uh, it, you know, some of them see get scared. You know, like completely run. You know, uh, so yeah, it's. It's not easy to. It's to funny do this because stuff. he's like a bat. Like he can see and it's like he can well, just don't see and that. Well, you That's hate, the only you thing I'm scared him. of. You, he's terrified yeah. of them, but he, you're like one. You I see in the dark well. Like, I actually don't use a headlamp or anything because yeah. I like my eyes being adjusted to the he's darkness. Used to it yeah. now. And I like I like walking around in the dark. It's fun. I think <gasps> the adventure of it and you know just kind of, I mean, yeah you. You get to experience it a little more when you don't have the lights on. I, th I think it's a little more, a little more fun, mm. <laughs> especially in those tunnels where you're way far away from people. You're like, all right, well, there's probably someone down here that's homeless, or you know, is gonna jump out and get me. <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of the most. You know, yeah. somebody kind of sneaking on set, you know, or sneaking into the location. I bet I heard stories like that too. Oh yeah. Well, your sound. Yeah, people, there was like, there was a sometimes guy. Sometimes the yeah. sound guys, you know how they had to be back and they have to watch their back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've encountered that where people just walk right in. You know, they all of a sudden there's somebody right there on set. You know, in a location it's supposed to be closed off, and there's somebody there. So yeah, that's that's I I think for us that's the more scary thing. Not no, often. not not often, mm -hmm. but um, there was Buffalo Trace Terminal. Buffalo, no, sorry, Buffalo Terminal, not Trace. That was another location. Um, <laughs> Buffalo Terminal in New York. Uh, we went outside. There's like some, some like, it's a huge structure. And we went out and around and we went into some uh, abandoned areas of the, the complex there. And we were with uh, one of the liaisons who was, uh, who was an ex-military. And we're walking around in there and and he stops me. He's like, stop and he goes like this and i was like okay and uh and i'm just frozen and he goes like this he points down and i look down and there's a trip wire and somebody had moved into one of the rooms mm -hmm. and put a trip wire and we look and there was it was a crazy creepy room with all these things on the wall and like it looked like a serial killer's like <laughs> den and like they had this this somebody had put like shards of glass like to kind of fall on you if you tripped on it yeah. and uh and we were just like okay let's get out of here so we, we you know we took off but um but that 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 one stood out in my mind the most and i think it scared me for 
uh, the next few years of <laughs> yeah. investigating because I mean it's real. Like you guys, there's a lot of dangers. There's a lot of involved. dangers, and and it can get real, real you know fast because you know you just never know what you're getting into, um, especially some of these abandoned locations. Yeah. I mean, have you got any projects or plans coming up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are. Um, we're, we're working. working. Yeah. We're working. Um, yeah. But it's too early to. Yeah, we. To announce anything uh, at this point. Yeah. Once we're getting closer, uh, we're definitely gonna send an email or a text to all of you and let you know. Yeah. So you can stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, it's hard right now because of all the um, COVID restrictions, and you know, it's it's hard to like find you know, crew and, and people mm -hmm. travel and all that. So we're very limited. Um, we got, we have, um, actually, uh, 2021, we're going to go to Texas. Uh, there's a big Paracon. Mm -hmm. It'll be, um, that, well, it'll be my first her. Paracon. So she's going to hold my hand through it. And, yeah, um, I've been to a couple, yeah, yeah. So we're, we'll be there. The house in between, uh, you know, everybody from the house in between will be there. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. And then, um, yeah, our our projects coming up, pl projects of uh, just fun stuff. We you know we like to have fun when we do this stuff, so that's yeah. what we're going to keep doing. We we are planning hopefully to come over next year, aren't we? Yeah. For the Paracon, hopefully. Oh, so, you can come coming. Oh, we get to meet. If you do that, be yeah. amazing. I'll be so happy. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, Very cool. The whole COVID situation is still pretty bad over here in parts of the UK. Well, we're back in lockdown. So we're back in, we're we're back in lockdown now. So oh, wow. Obviously, I didn't depending know that. what happens, really, we're going to try and come across next year. And then flu season's coming. That's going to be on top of that. Yeah. Don't scare people. No, I'm not scaring anybody. <laughs> we get enough of that. <laughs> yeah, but no, you got just be cautious. That's it. But that's all we can do. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But well, guys. We can't thank you enough for doing this live with us. We honestly can't, yeah. and to do it twice. So good oh, you. it's good to yes. it's good to talk to you guys. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. And thank you for having us back and yeah. and uh, getting to chat with you guys and talk about the movie and talk about fun uh, topics. I we really appreciate it. So I love meeting couples like us, you know, so that we don't feel yeah. so weird. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly, it's hard to talk to people that we. About ghosts and stuff, we just look at like we're not right, right? But nice of couples in the paranormal, like you can, <laughs> yeah. Ways, like. But yeah, honestly, truly, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, we appreciate that. We're doing, we hope you have a well, we've got a live later on, did you say before? You got another live today? What's that? You got another live to do today, or I didn't hear do we go in li live? Have you got another show? Have you got another yeah. show? You've got oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. We have a actually over in the UK a, a radio uh, interview. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with David. At, David. Yeah, David Cook. Yes. Do you guys know David Cook? Name's familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Once again, thank Keep, you so much. Yeah. Honestly, it's been a real honor. It really has to speak to both. Oh, same here. Stay in touch. I'm yeah. really curious to see what you guys come up with. Yeah. And what you do, yeah. what you find. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for everyone for tuning in as well. Yes. Right, guys, you, you have a good day, and we'll, I'm sure we'll speak to you soon. Sounds well, good. Sounds good. Right. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 <laughs>